Well, I'm here in, uh, in, in Stockholm. Uh, just just got off the train. Yeah, behind me. That's uh, Central Station. Uh, from Hothabore, Gothenburg. And uh, gonna be a few days here uh, in Stockholm. So uh, perhaps I'll show you around a little bit. So this is an uh, old town uh, across the water here, uh, Stockholm, uh, Gamala Stung, back here, yeah, you can just see it in the distance I think, but let me turn you around and yeah, sh so show you something, uh, yeah, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful spot, let's look. Beautiful courtyard here, and the architecture is uh, stunning. Keep going.
there's the Nobel Prize Museum here in Stockholm in Gamlastan in the old old city the old the old town square Well, here's a good view of Stockholm. Just a bit of a panorama. Yeah, looking from uh, Old Town into uh, the main part of Stockholm. Well, it's too large to get into one photo, one frame, the Norditska Museum, the Nordic Museum. Beautiful architecture. Uh, hope it comes out. The tower is just beautifully done, but too close to get it all, all in one frame. Look at this old ship. So this ship uh, sunk uh, within minutes of it leaving port, and uh, uh, then they then they brought it back up. It's hard to uh, really get perspective on just how huge this ship is. Yeah, it's just amazing to be to be here and be so close to it. it uh, you can just sense the age in the room. It just feels. Feels like there's a certain connection back to that that time. It smells old in the room.
Yeah, so this, uh, this entire ship sank shortly after it left port, but remained intact. And uh, later they were able to, to pull it out of the waters uh, completely, in, or mostly completely intact. Yeah, so the name of the ship is Vasa. Yeah, she's pretty amazing uh, being this close to uh, something that's so old and intact, so ornate. Hi guys, I am relaxing outside, out in front of the hotel that I'm staying at here in, in Stockholm. Just had a full day out, uh, looking at the sights, being a tourist. Uh, well, as good as a tourist as I can be. <laughs> I'll just say that. But it's good to be back, relaxing the pipe. Yeah, so here, uh, visiting Sweden, I thought, uh, yeah, when I get the chance and I'm going to have a smoke or something, uh, <clears throat> I think why not smoke uh, what I can smoke here in in uh, in Sweden. So and I got some tobaccos, um, yeah, from my friend uh, uh, Emil. Uh, not, uh, not on this trip, but uh, a few years ago, I think. And and I've tried all these uh, tobaccos. And uh, I put them away uh, safely uh, so they wouldn't dry out. And uh, yeah, when I was thinking about uh, what should I take to to Sweden, I thought, well, I have some some blend some blends that I can take that are available there, and uh, maybe I can try them uh, when I'm here in in Sweden. It would be a good place to. To try them, uh, might as well uh, match them up in that way. Mm. They're perhaps not standing or anything like that. Everyone has different tastes, of course, uh, when it comes to tobacco or anything else. Yeah, if I'm smoking, um, I'm smoking some Princeton tobacco. Yeah, so I'm not going to do a, a review on, on these tobaccos. Yeah, uh, I'm not even sure exactly uh, what's in this tobacco um, to tell you, but you can look them up. But it's 
it's a it's a nice middle of the road tobacco I think uh, it smokes it smokes well it burns it burns well uh, it's not too moist and, yeah not too dry so it it, it makes a nice ash and, uh, and there's some flavor there uh, it's it's not a uh, it's not an over uh, flavorful blend, but it's not bad either. And uh, I'll just show you the tobacco, just so you can see what it looks like. It's a uh, it's a ready rub tobacco, which makes it interesting for me. I like to handle the ready rubs. Uh, to, I like to ball them up and twist them down uh, into the bowl. I think they smoke really well like that. But it smells really good. The tobacco smells really good. Uh, it, it just has that old, uh, old fashioned kind of smell to it, I think. I really like it. It's uh, it's a bit fruity, uh, like plums or maybe raisins, uh, a little bit of bread, that kind of uh, yeah, that kind of essence to it. Uh, and it looks nice too. It looks like a nice tobacco, and it looks like there's some some darks in there, and it's mostly medium, and then there's a few. Uh, little pieces of of light tobacco, Virginia tobacco. Let me show you. Yeah. Take some down. See if I can get the light to hit it. Just right, I can't tell. Yeah, hopefully that's good. So, yeah, it's a it's a quality tobacco for something that you would get uh, you know, perhaps a over-the-counter type of tobacco. <clears throat> so it's a made by Scandinavian Tobacco Group, I think. Yeah, I like to bring tobaccos uh, with me that uh, that I can't get in the in the United States. I'm pretty sure this is one of those that I that I can't pick up in the States, but uh, that I had with with me, and uh, it's in a pouch uh, that makes it easy uh, easy for me to travel with more. Uh, there's there's less weight, less to be concerned with. I can just uh, shove it in a bag or uh, yeah, shove it into my luggage, and it's, it's uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not uh, not the weight of a tin or a jar or anything like that. So it's a decent tobacco uh, for a decent smoke. Yeah, so I'm just finishing my bowl here, oh, and catching the last little uh, glimpse of the day. So I'm going to try to, while I'm here, uh, take just some footage. I don't want to bore everyone with uh, just a bunch of travel, travel video stuff to sit through but just perhaps a glimpse something that's uh, nice to look at uh, some kind of nice view or architecture and uh, just a sense of the city uh, we don't all get the chance to, to travel and to see sites and 
get to experience uh, different places. I think that's too bad that we don't, for various reasons. Uh, some people just don't like to travel, and I understand that traveling is very difficult. Uh, yeah, there are, there are many challenges involved with traveling, and uh, being somewhere out of your comfort zone. And the most obvious thing is just being out of your your language group and not, yeah not understanding the signs and, and uh, having trouble communicating with other people. Fortunately, uh, there are many places uh, and Scandinavia is one of them that, uh, that has many people that, uh, that speak English. So it's pretty simple, simple here to, to get along. Yeah, to try to figure out what's going on and where to go, uh, but it's still it's still not like being at home, of course. So I understand that there are people that don't like to travel, but there are certain things that we come to understand. I think as uh, as humans, uh, if we don't have that interaction with uh, with people from somewhere else with different perspectives, different understandings of, of things. And, uh, and then there's just the simple, uh, the simple pleasure of seeing the, uh, the beauty of the world. And uh, I don't mean just the beauty of a meadow or a forest or mountains or lakes. Uh, that certainly is part of it, but the landscape is also beautified by the creation or um, ingenuity of man, and that's interesting to me, the architecture, the culture, uh, churches, mosques, synagogues, governmental buildings, bridges, uh, even, even the way the streets are, the highways, just seeing how uh, different people tackle different problems. Of, well, there's a waterway here, and how do we get across? And uh, just the ingenuity that it takes to build a bridge and especially uh, the architecture of the past, how it was integrated in some way into the natural world. And, and it added a, a sense of beauty to that world, to its surroundings, uh, in its architecture, in its carvings or uh, in its lines or however the builders uh, thought that it should be and and then it becomes a place of uh, a place of history a place where many people have crossed or traversed or lived existed and so it gives us a sense of of our own time and our own connection to the past and, uh, and it gives us a sense of how small we are, I think, in time. And we can imagine uh, all the people of the past that have come past that point or have lived in this spot. Uh, and I think th these are important connections uh, that we can contemplate and imagine when we travel. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that I think about uh, when, I'm, when I'm making uh, these videos and uh, deciding what to show. That, yeah, the, 
that these are places where humans have been, where they've put their, their mark, their sweat, their blood, their tears, their pain, their sorrow, their happiness, their joy, births and deaths, generation after generation. And that's the, the intrigue and the beauty, I think, of historic places, is that it, it connects us to these things. So anyways, uh, yeah, I don't want to make this too long. Uh, don't know how long. Well, everything's going to be, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try to piece something together that is perhaps worth seeing for a moment. And if you don't enjoy it, I understand, move on. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. But yeah, so you guys, uh, thanks for thanks for being here with me, uh, with with whatever uh, comes comes together of this. Hope you guys are enjoying a good place to have a pipe, some good time with family and friends, as I've been doing here in Sweden, spending uh, a lot of time with with just seeing friends and family and and being with them and that's important and helps us grow and helps us uh, build those relationships and, and strengthen and keep those relationships uh, which is important to me so <clears throat> yeah I still have some time here in Sweden so uh, mostly um, mostly a little bit of sightseeing now which is uh, a good thing, and so I will enjoy that. Yeah, so I'm gonna piece this in and uh, see what I can put together. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for stopping by and uh, paying attention. Yeah, see you.
Tamadásba jönnek le. Stockholm Central Station. It's a very busy place. Uh, many trains coming and going here. But beautiful architecture. If you stop and take a look. Yeah. kinds of shops, places to eat. Yeah. yeah. Hi guys. Another uh, another brief interlude here. Uh, I'm back from another day. Uh, looking around Stockholm today, seeing some of the sights, back at the hotel, relaxing with my pipe, and yeah, just really enjoying my time here in, uh, in Scandinavia, in Sweden. Uh, gonna head back. Uh, in another day or so. so. Today, uh, yeah, I was able to uh, go out on a, a boat tour. Uh, many of you know, perhaps all of you know, that Stockholm is is uh, a city on many islands and all connected or much of it connected by bridges <clears throat> so there's a lot of water surrounding Stockholm uh, both from the Baltic Sea and from a, from a lake on the other side and uh, so between those two bodies of water they, uh, they surround the city uh, in many different directions. So, yeah, I was able to sort of take a boat ride for about, I think it was a little over two hours around the, the different uh, waterways, uh, inlets and canals. And, uh, went through a, a few locks where they uh, where they pull you into a, a, a narrow area and either raise or lower the water because the lake is uh, is higher I think than the Baltic Sea and so then they they change the water level and then push you out one way or the other <clears throat> so the The boat ride was interesting uh, because you you were able to quickly see uh, much more of the city, uh, the skylines, and uh, yeah, just the the buildings, the old buildings uh, facing uh, facing into the waterways uh, that were pretty spectacular uh, all around. Uh, Stockholm was a a fairly large city. I think around two million. Uh, so, but it just, it seems to just stretch out all over these islands. Uh, and then, yeah, on each of these islands, there's just these, these large uh, 
you know, like, like living buildings, uh, apartment flats uh, from hundreds of years ago, uh, depending on yeah when they're built. But there are some modern structures as well, quite a few modern structures, but a lot of what you see in the, uh, the main waterways and canals are just these old, uh, old buildings from 16, 17 feet. And uh, it's just it's just really impressive and beautiful, uh, beautiful to see. So. Yeah, really, yeah, really enjoyed that. And being out on the water was nice. Uh, and uh, being able to just kind of rest your feet from walking for so long, and then. Uh, being able to to see that much in, in so little time, so yeah. So we enjoyed that today. I'll do something else tomorrow. I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm smoking another uh, tobacco that I got from my friend Emil here in Sweden. Uh, it's another kind of local Scandinavian, uh, <coughs> I think, like over over the counter type blend uh, tobacco, uh, pack tobacco that I brought. Uh, oh, the efforts in. Yeah, it's a tobacco I think that's been around. Uh, maybe 80 years or something, uh, I think. They say, uh, they say on the front it's a cut plug, uh, which, it, which it may be, uh, but it's listed, uh, funny thing is, I think online it's listed as a ribbon, but for me it's, it looks like a ready rub tobacco. So it's, it's, uh, it's Virginia's and, and Burley, it's mostly Burley, but uh, just a pinch of, uh, I think, I think red Virginia's, so just a little bit. Uh, so it is, it is mostly a Virginia uh, blend, and then they throw a little bit of Virginia for the sweetness. So it's really nutty, really roasty, uh, a little bit earthy, but very smooth, uh, a little bit of sweetness. This already rub. Let me show you before it gets too dark here. Uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful tobacco for uh, you know for just over the counter. Uh, type of tobacco. So here we go. Here's my attempt. Uh, tobacco. Yeah, so it's chunky. Chunky ready work tobacco. So, yeah, but. Yeah. Rubs out well. Uh, yeah, you can just rub it in your hands and, and twist it into the pipe. That's how I like to do it. You don't want to rub these out too hard. You don't want you don't want sawdust, of course. <sighs> but it burns well, it smokes well. There's no bite. I don't get any bite. Anything harsh. It's very smooth. Very subtle, not really a strong flavor, a strong taste, but but just subtle, just a, a smooth tobacco that's uh, yeah that just has a little bit of nuttiness there from the from the burleys. If you don't like burleys, you're not gonna probably want to go after this because it's it's definitely just a you know, has that that real typical of burley flavor. So, yeah, good for 
good for a, a short evening smoke like this. Yeah, all right, so that's it. I'm gonna finish my bowl and keep relaxing. guys yeah uh, back from Sweden um, yeah had a really good uh, visit uh, with with friends and family there uh, it was a good trip had a good time uh, last last couple days I was there in Stockholm yeah I didn't take didn't really take any footage uh, mostly just um, yeah spend some last moments with some family and saying goodbye to them and uh, getting them on some trains and uh, yeah so so didn't really take anything uh, last couple days sorry for that but uh, anyways I think you have a uh, a good impression uh, anyways I uh, didn't want to make this too long uh, anyways yeah but uh, now I'm back in Portland uh, back to work um, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be warm. I think the next week. Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, didn't want to make this this too long. Uh, have a feeling the video is gonna be long already. So, I'm gonna cut this short. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are well. Uh, yeah, just wanted to say, um, uh, yeah, take care, uh, enjoy a good pipe, uh, and hope it's not too. Hope it's not too uh, warm where you, where where you are, and uh, uh, hope you're hanging in there. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, see you guys later, and uh, yeah, enjoy a good smoke, uh, whatever it is, and wherever you are. Yeah, take care.